I don't. Again, can the Lakers get better? Sure, they got some. They got some pieces that they can move. A little bit of cap space. They can improve the roster. But I, I'm just looking at the top of the Western Conference. Oklahoma City just got Alex Caruso. That's a big move, and they're, they're going to go after uh, Hardenstein from New York and probably be able to get him. Like Oklahoma City is going in as they, they may be the team to beat in the Western Conference next year. Denver will be will be back. Dallas isn't going anywhere. Minnesota's not going anywhere. Okay, I don't know. I don't know about the Phoenix. I don't know about the Clippers, Pelicans. Some of those teams are question marks. I don't know. Maybe the Lakers are in that. The Lakers are in that group. The Clippers, Phoenix, New Orleans, Kings. They're they're in that group somewhere. And then you have the then you have Memphis. You know the Grizzlies are going to get back a lot of healthy pieces. They could jump. The Grizzlies could jump in that conversation of contending for the Western Conference. They can easily jump in that conversation. Spurs are coming. Houston's coming. So again, the Lakers are, are the Lakers amongst the top seventeen, six, seventeen. Probably they're probably in that mix. That's not that's not competing for a championship. If you if you're not in a conversation with Oklahoma City with Dallas, with Denver, with Minnesota, then you're not in the conversation to compete for an NBA championship or a Western Conference Finals. You're not, if you're not part of that, that conversation. Lakers are not part of that conversation. But again, I don't, this, like, this job is one of, has become one of the toughest jobs in all the sports. And pressurized job, pressurized jobs in all the sports because their expectations are just out of whack. They actually believe that they, their franchise actually believes that they're a championship team. They believe that that they can compete for that they can compete for a championship next year. The LeBron factor of this. So this is the other side, and I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, maybe even last week, with the whole breaking down the Dan Hurley uh, situation, which again was a very weird situation in terms of how quickly that fell apart. Uh, with, with Dan, Dan Hurley turned down the Laker job. This is a side of the LeBron era that you don't want to be on. He's 39 years old. He's going to be 40 in December. Ronnie James is going to be on the team. Probably a second round. It's going to be a second round pick. I don't see them taking him with a first round pick, but who knows? It's only worked out for two teams, Lakers and Phoenix, which I, well, I mean, he's doing the other teams' favor. I mean, he's doing other teams. I don't think other teams are checking for Ronnie James like that anyway. So with that, Really, it doesn't even matter if he's only working out for those two teams. He might as well only worked out for the Lakers, to be honest with you. But anyway, you got a situation where, again, I it's harder to coach now than it is ever. I don't under, I don't get the players buying into JJ Redick, knowing that he's probably that he got the job because of LeBron James. So the reason why he got the job, I like I don't get the respect. For, I don't I don't get the players respecting him. Even as an ex-player, again, to come to come in to, to come into LA, not the Clippers, the Lakers, with no coaching experience, that is that is a unbelievable amount of day-to-day pressure that go, that will be on him every single day from training camp on, from now on, from the offseason to to the draft to the training camp. That's it. Like that is he's going to be in a uh, under the spotlight every day moving forward. For the rest of the season, and again, I don't know what type of coach JJ Redick is because he's never coached before. I don't know what his style. I, again, I, you hear him doing commentating, and yeah, I'm sure he's going to emphasize shooting. Yeah, we like that's. I mean, that's duh. That's the NBA today. That's you got to have shooting. I get it, but I, I just don't. I don't know what kind of coach JJ Redick can be. Will be with the Lakers, and again, frankly, I don't think. I don't know. I know that this is not the best spot for J.J. Reddick. I, I actually think, thought that J.J. Reddick, for his development as a coach, if he wants to coach a long time in this league, would have been better off going to Detroit. Young team, don't have heavy expectations. You can develop talent. They got some nice pieces. They got some picks. I understand the culture has been bad there, and that's you know we'll talk about that later on with what happens with what happened with Monty Williams, but. You can build like that. You can develop as a coach with that team. To me, listen, you're not developing. You are not getting better as a coach coaching the Los Angeles Lakers. Like to me, the Laker job. I, if you you have to be to me, the Laker job is is built for. I, I think the Laker job is built for a retread. It's built for somebody who's coaching the league for a long time. 
you know, good luck trying to find somebody who's won a championship. That's that's going to be hard to come by. But it's built for somebody who's had some playoff success. I mean, actually, Monty Williams, you know, if Monty Williams would have waited, he would have been a perfect fit for the Lakers job if he would have waited. 